this is the complete edition. Here we have Winsor Newton Professional Watercolor. I don't have that many Winsor Newton watercolors, however, I absolutely love their gouache, designer gouache. Um, here I decided to do really nice and big swatches of the Potter's Pink. We have Winsor Newton, Daniel Smith and Roman Sismal or Schmal. And I heard that Schmink is also good. I haven't personally tried it. I wonder if I have it in a half pen. Let me just double check. No, I do not. I don't know why I kept thinking I do have it, but I actually I don't have it. I checked everywhere. I thought I had a um, tube of it. Again, checked everywhere, couldn't find, unless I misplaced it somewhere. So those are my Potter Pinks and love the Windsor Newton Potter Pink. Just love it. PLS Watercolor Bonus Pack. So that was the bigger one. This was this set here, which had, how many colors does it say in here? No, it does not. Well, a lot of colors and they are very, very bright. What I like about the PLS is that you can create, if you use a bit of water or quite a bit of water, you can create these lovely spidery cauliflower watercolor effects because of how the dye behaves with the water. Holbein HWC, so it, it doesn't look like I uh, expanded much of this, but I have a few colors here. And Shinhan PWC, so both of those are watercolors. This is a color that I would not enjoy much. However, check this out. <laughs> It's such a beautiful combo. And also I have done a illustration which was inspired by Sarah Jessica Parker wearing this beautiful dress in one of the um, Instagram pictures for the recap or whatever they're making for the Sex and the City. And yeah, I used that color and absolutely loved it there. In fact, let me show you again. There we go. So I used it here with chartreuse because it just pops nicely. If that video is already up, I'll try to link it up the card here. But if I don't, then it's probably still coming. PLS Watercolor Expressive Face Tones. Now that's the face tone set. And you can see again, this beautiful effects. So if you try to lift PLS soon after you put it onto the paper, so without letting it dry much, because it's dye based, it will dry really fast and then you'll struggle to lift it. But if you do it fairly quickly and add quite a bit of water, so lifting and adding water, then you get these beautiful effects. Just in case you wondered. M. Graham Quinacridon uh, Quintet set. I do enjoy their colors, but I only have a few because they're super super expensive here in UK. So yeah. Then we have Viacro Art Graph Taylor Shape. So I've got three colors here, which are really beautiful. Still completely baffled why this one is called sepia and this one is brown. I am convinced that they should be the other way around, but it is what it is. The ochre is really beautiful as well. Ochre was the first color I tried and absolutely loved it. Altenew watercolor set. Now this set was sent to me by Altenew also during my crafting years and I really, well this was actually like more of a transitioning time where I already kind of was heavier into watercolors but still had my roots um, planted in the in the crafting world but yeah so those were the watercolors. I love this bamboo again a very chartreuse -y type of a color but apart from that there's quite a few really nice colors I mean really really nice colors so for a set that is designed to be you know craft grade watercolor I think they have made a, a really really good job here I mean grapevine, rubellite, coral, berry, cotton candy uh, you know I could just go on bamboo obviously Emerald, the emerald is really pretty. Ocean waves, lagoon, mountain mist. Really nice colors. Love their pinks and reds. I mean, they're really, look at that crimson. It's just really, really pigmented. Tim Hall's Distress Crayon. 
something I haven't used also in a, in a good while but now these are fun because they're very soft when you use them they come in this plastic kind of holder you twist them and therefore you never get your hands dirty because they're really kind of soft um, and you can blend them and they're water soluble so you can create loads of fun things with them but the good thing is once it dries it dries permanently there is no smudging of any kind so I love that Vicky Button art crayons now not a big fan of those again those were more from the crafting era these are the Alter New Crisp Dye ink sets so those are the colors I like the color palette don't use them very often I prefer Tim Holtz um, Distress inks here we have the Distress Oxide inks and Distress inks here I wish I'd done bigger swatches somehow because you can see the color better on the bigger swatches but anyway you get the idea Tombow brush pens now we have candy color set we have the portrait palette set and these were the open stock there I really like their pale colors to use as they are and their vibrant colors are stunning with water they're just amazing I mean look at these colors here my current favorite is the 757 but these two are also really really beautiful then we have Versa Magic Dewdrop inks as well Aquarius by Roman Schmal there's a couple of colors here I don't think I swatched out all of the colors I have by now because I have been sent um, the uh, latest big release um, so I have those as well oh no I did yeah so this is that from that release here on this page some really interesting colors here um, this was a twin tip marker set of 16 by Jackson's which was fun they didn't bleed through onto the other page which was good Senelier oil pastels now these will never become fully permanent because they're oil pastels so you do need to be careful how you create with them but they're so beautiful the only thing that sets me back from using them more often is exactly that is that they always continue moving and you know printing onto the other page so if I ever wanted to use uh, create art just on one page and have the other page blank or put a piece of paper in between the pages then I should do it but otherwise yeah it's beautiful this is again portrait set yes what is this now number six seven I'm losing my count but you see it's good to do this sort of thing you just realize that you have a lot more or you, you, you remind yourself of what you have okay so these are going to be more uh, pencils from now onwards I think a couple more other paints but uh, predominantly pencils so here I have swatched out all of my Faber-Castell polychromos in um, kind of medium sized um, swatches I found out that they work so much better um, on this paper the bigger you do the swatches the better it works with the smaller swatches it just looks like meh it just doesn't do anything but with the larger swatches for instance these were most recent and then here I had them before but there were smaller circles and I think someone actually commented saying you know they couldn't see properly the color and I totally agree you can't see the beauty of the color in small pencil swatches so I went ahead and created bigger ones and they just look so much better um, so going forward this is the size of a pencil swatch I would do so these were open stock and these were the Durban drawing pencil um, yeah so I wish there were more colors but a little bird told me that they are not planning to create more colors in the near future but maybe at some point so who knows um Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle so these are beautiful they are the watercolor pencils and best in my opinion and there is a video either that came out before this one or coming soon where I'm comparing all the 
watercolor pencils and sharing my favorite and why. Durban graphite tint pencils. So these ones, I haven't found a way of using them still. So I'm not using them in my art. I wish I found a way how to incorporate them or at least a couple of colors. But for now, they're not being used very much. Holbein open stock pencils. Love them. This was the Holbein colored pencils that I treated myself to during this um, lockdown 2020 year that we had. And it was such a pleasant um, experience <laughs> to receive that big set and swatch them out and, you know, enjoy using them. It has really been very pleasant. And then a couple of cards that I wanted to add from Holbein because I realized I really like the pencil itself. I I think actually before I ordered the big set, I ordered a couple of the single pe pencils just to understand how they work, how they feel. And I loved it. Went ahead, bought the 50 set, and then on top of that, added a few more colors uh, as well. Of course, love their chartreuse green. What else is there to say? And then we have Karen Dash Luminance colors. So these are all open stock that I bought. So nice collection by now. And then we have Tombow Color Dictionary Irrigitans. So if you remember those, I had bought them in a nice, really well presented box. It looks like little, you know, booklets that you pull out. That is about it because the actual colors are not that fun. The luminous or the neon colors are actually probably the best out of the three. Um, but yeah, they're so hard. You have to press so hard on them. I got wrist fatigue so quickly. I can't even explain. And what a shame, you know, it just, it felt like there's a bunch of pigments like this pastel set. It felt like there was a bunch of, um, not pigment, but actually, uh, filler and very little of pigments, so made them feel very bad quality. Same thing here. Earth set. So this was by Jackson's, so their own watercolor wrench, and they were quite nice. I like the quality of uh, of the paint. There has been a talk that um, Saint Elier and Jackson's are sort of made in the same factory which I don't know whether that's true or not. Um, Schminke, so these were just the 2017 colors, which I have actually done a video on this. So if you wanted to see me swatch these larger swatches, you can do that. I'll try to link it up there. Ecoline liquid watercolor and white. So every single color that I have, I done mixed with white to see what sort of colors and tones we could get and also there is an interesting kind of chemical reaction um, that happens and um, I mean for instance here beige that's quite interesting and that's their gold it's a uh, it's a like a light champagne gold and here is a flat gold because I added the white into there. Coming to the end slowly, this is Winsor & Newton Designer Gouache. Love them, absolutely love them. I'm thinking I might have added a few more colors since, so I will have space to add them. Holbein Acrylic Gouache. So the difference between those two is these have acrylic paint in them. So once they dry, they become permanent like acrylic paint would be. And these should be still water soluble um, after they dry. Liquitex heavy body acrylic. This was a set I bought and then a couple of the open stock colors as well. Then I decided why not just go through all of my acrylic paints, which I don't have that many of. Um, again, these were from the crafting days, acrylic paint by Dina Veckley. So this is a heavy body. Um, I think these two are by Ranger and Illusions as well by Diane Reevely. And those are the colors. So I felt that these were kind of matte 
and I think they dried faster as well. This was a really beautiful color. Pomegranate seed. And these were Pablo Studio acrylics. I actually forgot to swatch out. I have one. No, actually I have two by Sennelier. I've got this one here, well loved and used. This is the iridescent pearl. I like mixing it into other colors sometimes. And there's also a yellow ochre that I have in this Sennelier abstract. Um, not too keen on the packaging because it just keeps falling around, but it is great for terms of in, in terms of no wastage because you really can squeeze out to the last drop. And then finally we have Dalla Roni FW Acrylic Ink. These beautiful colors. Look at that. This is their fluorescent pink, which is basically a neon. And it looks cooler on the camera because neons are very hard to pick up on the camera. Uh, but that's what they are. This is that peach pink that was called Flesh Tint and was renamed since. And then we have Amsterdam acrylic ink as well, just down at the bottom. And that is it. I'm not intending to put anything on here just because, I don't know, it just feels weird. The last page here you can see doesn't open fully, so it kind of bends like that and makes it a shorter page. Um, and same thing in the beginning as well. So, yeah, you can see their stuff like that. Um, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found maybe some color references that you'd like to note down or add to your wish list. And, uh, or it helped you to actually, maybe if you considered a color before and you saw it here and you thought, no, it actually is not what I, what I thought it was. Either way, I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.